Welcome to this annual SEEK studio. I'm super excited to welcome you all here. I'm Fania, as Alina said already, and I will host you today and take you through this day today. Dig deeper, ask the right questions, and hopefully, yeah, get the most out of it. I'm super excited to welcome today Frederick Bost from On Running in Zurich. He is having a keynote uh, with you guys, or presenting a keynote with you guys, uh, with the topic, it started with a hose pipe. Welcome, Frederick Bost. Hey, Frederick. Hey. <laughs> so, as I said already, Frederick Borst is since eight years a very vital part on On Running in Zurich. As a head of growth and product, he seamlessly combines creativity, business, and engineering. Let's see what Frederick has to say with his keynote. Hi, welcome everyone, um, and good morning. So, I want to take the next couple of minutes to give a quick introduction about On who we are, what is so special about us, and uh, yeah, basically how it all started. Um, I started it on when the company was a little bit smaller. Um, I started probably as the employee number six in the team. Um, so, but these three guys um, basically got the founders of on. Um, sometimes you have to jump into a cold water, or in case of uh, Olivier, Casper, and David, they had to take a cold shower in 2010, and from there, um, it basically all started. Um, let me quickly take you to what's so special about the shoes and the technology behind our brand. Um, so Olivier, is, uh, which is the guy in the middle, it's, uh, he's a former pro triathlete. He won multiple world championships and also was competing in the Ironman Hawaii. Um, but he had a lot of injuries throughout his career, so he was always looking for something new in the running shoe. But the running shoe has not really developed over the last couple of three decades, probably. Um, so he was going together with an engineer from the ETH in Zurich um, to thought about a new concept of running shoes. So what they did, they just cut out uh, water pipes or hose um, and glued them onto a conventional running shoe. What it has allowed us to, to do is, um, I'm talking about it in a second about the cloud tech technology, but Basically, that was really the first um, prototype and the idea behind the brand. Um, with that shoe, he went to a lot of friends, so Casper and um, David, which were um, working together at McKinsey, and then from there, they went into the agency side and started a business, then a lot of thinking, what could and how could they produce it, that zero idea about shoe manufacturing, how to start a business, and so it was quite of a roller coaster from them at the beginning, or oh, it still is, actually. Um, so from there, they took um, the shoe, which was really the prototype, and made a first design draft, what you see here on the right. Um, and that what we call monsters. It's actually still the same. So we start, when we talk about a product, we start really with the, with the first concept, um, take it then there from the engineering to design, and then make it happen. So they took the shoe um, in 2010 and went to the ISPO, which is uh, like that's the fair or that uh, sports expo, what you have to be. Um, so we went there 2010, presented the shoe, and won the brand new award uh, back then. So that was the first, not an easy win, but it was a really good start to, to really take it from there to the next level. Um, so about in on, we are probably talk about two major ones when we, when we talk about us as a brand. Um, it's design and technology. So let me quickly talk about the technology. Um, the technology is represented in all our products. You see it at the, at the outsole. So these funny pots, what you see below, we call them clouds. That's what cloud tech is all about. Um, and they give you two major benefits. Um, the first one is you have a soft landing and a firm takeoff. What does it mean is that you have these open construction elements, and these ones are collapsing while you're landing, but they stay together and give you a, a forward momentum, which is really explosive, which you don't have in other running shoes. When you think about a normal cushioning system, you have something really soft, and like it's just a normal EVA or rubber, whatever it is, but it is not really flexible. It is always the same, and it doesn't really move around. Um, next to it, which which allowed us also cloud tech to do is you have these 
small pots underneath the shoe so we can really tailor where you want to have the cushioning, how much cushioning you want to have in which part of the shoe, and where do you really want to have the cushioning and not so much. Um, so from there, I uh, just want to show you a quick video um, how it actually looks while you're running. Um, so we took that whole idea to then the next level, which was the shoe we produced last year. Um, and there you really see how, the, how these pots are collapsing, and then you have a firm takeoff, um, which really helps the runner um, to get into a more forward momentum. Um, the second thing next to this soft landing explosive takeoff is uh, so, like a horizontal cushioning. So when you think about a running movement, you have always this forward momentum. And you see it really good at tennis, for example, if you have like on a sand course, you have always people are sliding into a step. So they want, they want to keep the momentum. They don't want to have this stop. Where you have this stop moment, you think about injuries on the knees and joints, wherever. So what does it help with this open construction? You have a horizontal cushioning system, which allows the runner to have a forward cushioning system. And that's like the main two benefits when you think about or when we talk about cloud tech. Um, there's a next one to that, which is um, in a traditional shoe construction, you have always a midsole and outsole, and that combines the basic the sole, what you, what you think about as a customer. Um, normally, in the traditional shoes, you have a cushioning in the midsole. There's a lot of like EVA, chill, and all that kind of stuff. But with us, we moved the cushioning to the uh, lower part, to the outsole, and that allowed us to do something special in the midsole. So we had a couple of years ago the idea to, to come up with a, a speedboard, we call it. It's a flexboard, more or less. Um, and you could think about like a spring or like a bow you really extend, put energy in it, and then you get a return as soon as you move forward. Um, and that was really unique about the brand as well, because normally in traditional shoes, you don't find that, and it's not so easy to uh, maintain that. Um, from there, basically, I just want to show you that picture because it represents quite well uh, what we're all about. Um, we're always about design and, inno and innovation or technology, and that's really our heart. Um, when you look at that picture, so that's all the different pieces what comes together just in the, in the shoe, and from there you really develop then the shoe further and take it to the next level. When you speak about next level, um, so. We are now 10 years in the market. We just had two weeks ago our 10th anniversary. Um, and I just want to give you a little bit of a wrap up what we, what we now and have a little bit of a status quo. So how do we get there and what we have done? Um, over the last decade, a um, little bit of a weird word, uh, over the last 10 years, um, we managed to convince or get over 7 million people um, running with us. Um, that goes really from the person who just stays want to fit um, to, the, to someone who just wants to stroll around the city to really triathlete, pro athletes, um, also people from the industry which are like big fans or as an example you see on the top the Red Bull skydiving team, they also like to jump out of the plane with our shoes. Um, so where do we are, where do we are right, right now? Um, we have over 6,000 dealers um, around the world. We have probably 50 countries available. We work in three streams. Um, so one channel is our direct connection to the retail partners. Uh, we have a really big sales force. They, they are in the market, really working together with the, with the different retail partners to, to train them, to work with them, and to make it happen. To, like our big markets, or we have like big five markets, is the US, it's the Germany, the, or the Dach region, Switzerland and Austria, uh, France, UK, and then Japan. It's our main focus, and there's probably 80% of the business coming from. Um, besides that, we work in, in the smaller markets where we are not so present or where we want to test the water and see how it goes. Um, we work with distributors, um, and these distributors help us to test and open the doors um, to some retail partners because it's quite um, heavy lifting from, from us as a brand to have everywhere people present. And the third stream is basically where I'm coming in and with my team is the web shop. Um, we have 
48 countries on the web shop available, seven languages, multi-currencies, and we deliver basically to all of these places from seven warehouses. I just want to um, show you quickly that map. Um, we have seven warehouses around the world. We're just in the process of adding two more to the mix. And from there, we're distributing to, to these 48 countries. Um, next to that, we have seven offices. Our main office is in Zurich, um, where, we, where it all started. In Zurich, we're roughly 230 people, probably. Uh, it's changed quite a lot uh, nowadays. Um, next to that, our second biggest is in Portland, Oregon. There are probably 130, 140 people there. Uh, we also have a presence here in Berlin, where we just started uh, a year ago. Um, we mainly, Berlin is, is our tech hub and digital activations, so we have a lot of engineering and digital marketing team sitting here, um, but they work together across the, across the world. Besides that, all the offices are really cross-functional, so we, have, we try to have a replication from Zurich in each of these locations, and uh, that's, how we, that's how we grew the business over the last years. Um, our production, um, just to be there also transparent, is in Vietnam. Uh, we work with our partners since day one, basically, and they helped us to engineer the molds, get the products in the place. They really brought expertise when it comes down to manufacturing. Um, but we also have an office in Hanoi and have a lot of people are sitting there so they can really work together with them. Um, we try to produce also some pieces in Europe, um, but that has some, some, some other challenges. But for example, in accessories, where we can uh, use already the existing infrastructure, we do that when we can. Um, so basically, in the last 10 years, um, our portfolio grew as we grew as a company. We have roughly 30 different styles now from the shoes, just speaking. Um, and if you pointed out by sizes and color, we have roughly 1,800 SKUs, as we call them. Um, and that brings a lot of new challenges for us because every year we're adding more products and this is not what we have done like a couple of years ago. So we, re we have to rethink our strategy basically every half a year when we, when we produce and introduce a new product to the market. Um, we talk about internally about three verticals. Um, 2016, um, we started our outdoor and trail category. Um, as we are Swiss running shoe brand, uh, it was quite of a natural move to do something for the outdoor and for the trail, as the mountains is our home. Um, so we introduced what you see here on the, on the right, the Cloud Venture. Um, and that's now a special version of that that's really just for the high performance trail running and really um, hitting the pace, basically. Um, the one in the middle is the cloud flow that represents more or less all our performance-driven products. Um, that's really for, for the pro athletes, and we try to help them also, and we work really close with our athletes to, to develop shoes, so they are from day one in the production, in the development, in all innovation. Um, the one on the, on the, all the left is our latest edition. Um, that's probably a little bit our take on sneakers, you could call. Um, it's not a word, not, not real sneaker, but it is probably the closest to an urban or, yeah, sneaker as we would go as a brand. Um, that was introduced just in November last year. So next to that, um, we also didn't want to run naked. Um, <laughs> so we started also 2016 with a really small apparel line. Um, it's not a huge um, line so far, and the portfolio is, is rather small, um, but we develop more and more products um, as we have done in the past with all our other products. We want to really stay focused on different pieces and doesn't want to like, just print logos on T-shirts on and make it available for everyone. Um, so all our apparel pieces go through the same innovation and technology process as our shoes, and that's something we really want to try. Uh, or we, we do that with all our products, from shoes to apparel, also to accessories, which we just added. Uh, recently. Um, next one is just uh, a, like three highlights when we, when we speak internally about the last 10 years at on, um, just to give you a little bit of a perspective um, what we have done in the last 10 years and also like how we got there. Um, so one thing what I wanted to point out is Atmos in Japan. Um, it's one of the that 
store in Japan you want to be at as a shoe company. So we started working with them one and a half years ago and we're really feeling honored to work with them. They are a really big fan of us. Uh, we also try to, try to integrate them more and more how we can get and we get a lot of good input from, from them as well. And they even invited us for the AtmosCon last year to the expo of them. Um, so they produced a movie for us and we had a booth there and we could really uh, make a big step into the Japanese market which is super fascinating for us because it's so different to all the other markets. Um, when you think about the global strategy, it's like all these different markets are interacting really, really different and uh, Japan is no exception to that. Um, the next one is, is probably not a highlight. I don't want to call it a highlight, but it was a story which really was close to our heart. Um, the guy, what you see here in the picture is Tim Don. He was, or he is, the world record holder in the Ironman distance. And two years ago at Kona, which is the world championship, he was like that guy to watch out. He had won multiple titles the year and was really the, the big bet for, for, the, for the day of the race. Um, the day before the race, actually, he went on a last quick training session um, on his bike, got unfortunately hit by a truck and uh, broke his neck. Um, so we were super sad to hear that. A lot of us was, was present in Kona in Hawaii. Um, we tried to help wherever we want uh, and we could, um, but it was really, really a hard time for him um, because, I mean, breaking his neck was really giving him two options. So option one was to do a normal recovery, which takes ages, and there, the medicine guy or the doctor said to him, was like, do that, it takes longer, but it's probably the more secure one. Um, but he's quite of a crazy guy. And the second option is to put a halo on your head, which is the metal ring, what you see here. Um, so it's basically gets screwed in your hat and secures the hat to stay upright and you can't move it around. And he had to wear that for a couple of months. But the, good, the thing is with that, it's super painful and it adds a lot of complexity into the whole recovery, but you can faster recover. And he was so passionate about his sport and he wants to be like what he loves to do. So um, we were sitting together with him and, and, and really talked to him. And we did a documentary about it, um, which was like half an hour long, and really followed him about his journey to his next run and to his first run. He was then actually competing a year after, not even a year, like 10 months later at the Boston Marathon, uh, which was his first run, which was super emotional for him. And uh, he got really big, uh, yeah, it was really a, a big day for him. Um, and actually, he started in, in, in Kona just four months ago and also uh, didn't won, but he was able to finish the whole race and still got into the top 20, which is phenomenal. If you would think about it, he was just two years ahead and broke his neck, and everybody told him, uh, yeah, don't do it anymore. Um, the story got even featured in the New York Times and had to reach around like 65 million people, so it was also really, was also kind of a success for us. Um, but it was a little bit of a balance how we played it and what we're doing for that. But it just shows how close uh, we are from the brand. Um, we are work together with our athletes. Um, the, the last bit, what I wanted to show you, is basically a little bit of a passion project of us. Um, we introduced uh, a new product, uh, Hiking Boot, uh, last summer. So we wanted to bring the mountains to our fans and to the, our audience. So what we have done is we created our own home in the mountains. Um, that was developed and engineered in-house. Um, so we built a mountain hut, put it into the Engadin Mountains. Uh, it's above 2,000 meters altitude. Uh, and we invited our family, friends, fans around the world to visit us there, um, stay there for like a night or just a couple of hours, and yeah, enjoying the mountains as we do as a Swiss shoe company as well. So that uh, was a really good success and it was really a fun project. Took a lot of uh, effort, but it was really cool to see that. Um, yeah, I just want to give you some impression how it looked from the outside and the inside. Um, the hike was not so easy, but um, yeah, it was, was doable for most of the people. Um, but we had so for sure some fun moments where a dealer of us from the US was almost struggling not to make it. <laughs> um, so we uh, had to carry his bags up there, but yeah, it was, was good fun. Um, so that's basically us. Um, we are nowadays almost 550 people. Uh, we will probably by end of the year around 700 around the world. Um, so we are really 
fast growing. We're actually the fastest growing running shoe brand in the, in the, at the moment around the globe, or we, we are that since two years. Um, and we had another um, fun moment in November where we got a new team member as well. So uh, Roger Federer joined us uh, last November. Um, so it was actually his first official working title. Um, but yeah, it was just fun to, to have him on board as well. Um, we, and through that, we will develop with him together some new products, um, which will hit the market um, this year already. And yeah, just one last thing probably um, to give you a little bit of perspective what comes up next. Um, that's our product which I'm wearing and the guy behind me is wearing as well. Um, that just comes out in end of March. Uh, it's our latest production as the Cloud Nova. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can try it out soon. And that's it. Thanks a million. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick. Guys, so now you have uh, the time to ask Frederick a couple of questions about his keynote, or in general, or later if you want, you can also ask him personally and catch him here to ask him other questions you may not uh, want to ask now. Does any one of you have any questions? Okay, guys, that means you catch Frederick later. <laughs> thank you again. Let's give a warm welcome and thank you to Frederick Bros from On Running. Thank you. Bye.